Okay, in this lesson, we're going to speak about the difference between the Hamza and the Alif. When we spoke about the alphabet, we spoke about the Alif. Now, there's another letter called the Hamza, which is actually, in most cases, associated with the Alif. And in fact, when the Hamza is associated with the Alif, it's no longer termed an Alif. It's called a Hamza. So let's talk about this in a bit more detail. So first of all, we'll talk about the Alif. So for example, the word Jar. Jar means neighbor. A few things to notice here is here we have the Alif. Now the Alif comes as a long vowel. So if you remember in the lesson on the long vowels, when we have a Fatha followed by an Alif, it's a A sound. So we say Jar. Now a thing to note about Alif is that the vowel on top of it is a Sukun, although it's not written. And you can think of Alif as a long vowel. And a point to note about this is that you'll never find the alif in the beginning of a word. And the reason why is because in Arabic you can't start a word with a letter that has a sukun. And we said that an alif will always have a sukun. Now let's talk about the hamza. Now let's take the same word, jar and we'll add an alif and nam. This is what's known as lam ta'rif, or the alif lam of definiteness. When you add this to it, you make it definite, the neighbor. Now if you notice, there's an alif here. Remember we said that an alif can never be at the beginning of a word. So you wouldn't be surprised to know that this is not actually an alif. It's actually a hamza. So we, we pronounce this as al jar. So notice the sound in the beginning a al jar. That a sound, which in English is called a glottal stop, a is actually the hamza. It's not the alif. So some other examples of this is we have here at ut it so here a u i those three letters are actually a hamza they're not an alif although an alif is written but there's also the hamza which is this small sign here we'll explain this later on inshallah in another lesson so that a u i sound is a hamza and a hamza can also have a sukun similar to the alif for example the word mu'min mu'min means a believer now here the hamza is on a wow it's not on an alif but we'll explain this in another lesson inshallah but the point is this is a hamza and it has a sukun on it so mu mu now let's assume there was actually a fatha rather than a sukun so let's just take this off and put a fatha how would we pronounce this it will be mu min inshallah in the next lessons we'll explain the two types of hamzas wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam